Good evening. I'm Sue Vita, Chief of the Music Division at the Library of Congress. And welcome to our annual Stradivarius concert. This has been a year like no other, especially for the performing arts. We hope you have enjoyed the various virtual offerings that we've presented this fall. All the content is still online and can be enjoyed at your leisure and convenience. We also hope you will enjoy the retrospective of our annual Stradivarius concerts featuring various radio broadcasts from 1937 to 2006. We would like to thank our present donors and supporters of the concert series for without your support, we would not be able to continue to present our virtual series, which has been a lifeline to musical artists not only in the United States, but throughout the world. We hope to have your continued support. And for those of you just tuning in, we hope that you too might consider supporting our series, which has offered free concerts and events since its founding in 1925. As you can see, I am standing in the Coolidge Auditorium. I'm actually standing next to the exact seat of Mrs. Gertrude Clark Whittle, seat 101S, which is all the way at the back of the hall. Mrs. Whittle donated five Stradivari instruments to the library in the mid-1930s, and nearly 85 years later, her foundation is still supporting the annual Stradivari concert, as well as other concerts in our season. I think I will let her speak for herself, for she explained her mission so well to the public in this radio broadcast on December 14th, 1937. To all unseen friends who are listening in tonight, we welcome you. We are brought together by the universal bond of the love of music. This collection of instruments that you will hear played upon this week were made by the great craftsman, Antonio Stradivarius. I held them in trust for a short time. Now they belong to every one of you, for they were given to our government to hold and protect forever. In presenting these instruments to the Library of Congress, it was my aim to give to the people of this country an opportunity to see and hear these rare Stradivari. They can be viewed at the Library of Congress by anyone who wishes to do so. They can be heard in concerts held in the library and also through the medium of the radio by an even larger audience. If the appreciation and enjoyment of music in America will be advanced thereby, the purpose of my gift will have been fulfilled. As you already know, the festival being held this week is to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the death of Stradivari on December 18th. But it is not our intention to make you wait another century or two for a similar presentation. It is our hope that we shall be able to present a commemorative concert each year on December 18th, and that arrangements will be made whereby you can all hear it. Thank you. Gertrude Clark Whittle, along with Elizabeth Sprague Coolidge, were such visionaries and also so generous in spirit. Even in the years of World War II, the Stradivari concert took place and offered solace. Of course, a global pandemic presents different challenges. However, we felt that it was important to carry on this tradition, even though the auditorium has been closed since the start of the pandemic. Tonight, we will hear an archival video performance from the Dover Quartet Stradivari concert in 2017. But before we begin, I would like to thank the concert office staff, as well as the other people in the music division who have contributed to the various virtual offerings this fall. All of you have been critical in advancing not only the library's mission but also the mission of our founding benefactors, Mrs. Whittle and Mrs. Coolidge. On behalf of the entire music division of the Library of Congress, I wish all of our listeners happy holidays and a safe start to the new year.